assalamu alaikum everybody uh today we are going to start uh, drugs acting on the gonadal and reproductive system uh you see the sub topics within this particular topic are a lot and today we are going to study estrogen and anti-estrogen i should highlight that in the test on thursday these topics are included so make it sure you do <coughs> learn this topic as well for the test on thursday this is one of the very first slides i shared with you all and that was about hypothalamus all right and then we talked that the hypothalamic hormone would be gnrh which is good at a drop in hormone all right and then it acts on anterior pituitary gland produces fsh lh and then the effect is produced on the gonads <clears throat> as i said earlier we are going to talk about estrogen and anti estrogen drugs today so first of all let's learn how exactly estrogen is produced so that we would know what kind of drugs can actually mimic the action of estrogen what is the function of estrogen and how can we antagonize function of this particular class of drug all right so you see here the main the main center of this molecule okay estrogen is actually cholesterol now when i say cholesterol so you see cholesterol uh, you should always remember that all of the hormones that are steroidal in nature which have cholesterol moiety within their molecule so they do tend to pass the cell membrane easily without any hindrance all right after cholesterol eventually it is turned into androestinate diode so you see here here it has two phases it can be because my focus it on is on estrogen today so i will be focusing on this part all right okay wait wait a minute okay all right just wait a minute all right okay so i will be focusing on this part today so you see you have to memorize this enzyme aromatase all right so this acts on this molecule and converts it into estrone now by the action of 17 hsd1 it is converted into estradiol all right here is again more detailed overview about how it's going on and we also have the other hormones okay which are producing positive effect for the production of these hormones so you see this is thika cell and granulosa cell all right and then you see how exactly estrogen is produced like i said it has cholesterol in their compound so you see this is the basic structure of it and you should memorize how this look how it looks like so that you know how exactly cholesterol because you see why cholesterol is very important cholesterol is very important because of the reason if you know a, a drug is uh, lipophilic in nature so you would know that it will be readily distributed and then you can actually predict about its properties let's talk about more so you see we have natural estrogens and then we have synthetic estrogens as well obviously natural are those which are produced in the body and synthetic are those which we have produced artificially and these are given to uh, people who don't have enough estrogens in their body right all right so first of all let's talk about estrogen natural estrogen contains 
17 beta estradiol, estrone, and estriol, each of which contain 18 carbon atoms. The most potent natural estrogen is 17 beta estradiol. Natural uh, estrogens are produced by the metabolism of cholesterol. Testosterone is the immediate precursor of estradiol. Conversion of Testosterone to 17 beta estradiol is catalyzed by the enzyme aromatase. This is very important because later on we will have a particular class of drug which would actually work by inhibiting this enzyme named aromatase. So it's very important you learn its action here. All right. So estron and estriol are produced in the liver and other peripheral tissues from 17 beta estradiol and are frequently conjugated by esterification of sulfates. If I were you, I would have made a flow chart that will help me to memorize it. All right, then we have equivalent and estron derivative is a pharmacologically useful estrogen purified from horse urine. All right. So you see, again, I inserted this slide in order to summarize this. So you see, female sex hormone, of course, is estrogen. We have estradiol, esteron, and estriol. So you see, estradiol is secreted by graphene follicle corpus luteum and placenta in females and by aromatization of testosterone in testis and extra glandular, glandular tissues in males. And it is very potent. Then we have esterone. It's oxidized form of estra, estradiol, uh, that which occurs in liver. And then we have estriol formed by hydroxylation of estrone. All right. So you see, this is a... Uh, this is classification of steroid. This is classification of synthetic estrogens. And they are further classified on the basis of their, uh, of the presence of steroidal moiety in them and because of the absence of that particular uh, part. All right. So you see, the steroidal ones are these. Ethanyl, estradiol, mistranol, Tibulonone. Then we have non estroidal diethyl silbestrol. This is, by the way, it's also abbreviated as DSB. All right. I know, sorry, it is abbreviated as DES. All right. Then we have hexestrol and then we have dienestrol. You see, uh, here, I actually inserted uh, this diagram of menstrual cycle so that you may notice where exactly estrogen is secreted and how exactly it is producing its action. So you see, I want you to look at the follicle, okay? And then I want you to look at what is the estrogen level in the body of the female. All right, starting from the beginning of the cycle when the follicle is like really small, all right. So afterwards, you see, as it grows further, it turns into graphene follicles. So you see here, just before ovulation, it gets its peak. All right. Okay. So it, it, it is also said that because you see here, if you, if you notice here, that as the estrogen is rising, all right, it actually gives also boost to LH, all right. And then LH has a peak, which actually releases the ovule, right? Okay. Later on, we have a sharp decline in the levels of estrogen in the female body. And then again, we see a second peak here. The second peak is actually comparatively really small. And why is that small? Because of the reason here, corpus luteum, is actually producing the estrogen. All right?
So you see, we have two peaks, one here, one here. All right. I, I discussed this slide with you. I really like this diagram because it um, helps me to rem uh, you know, memorize the entire cycle um, very effectively. All right. So you see here, FSH actually uh, increases the estrogen amount, all right? And then uh, uh, corpus luteum also produces uh, estrogen, all right? Okay, so talking about the structure. Uh, first, we are talking about synthetic estrogen here. So a variety of synthetic estrogens have been produced. Uh, frequently used synthetic estrogens are these we have already talked about. Mechanism of action. First of all, I want to move on the other slide and then we'll get back here. All right. Okay. I hope uh, you were motivated uh, and you actually looked into the playlist where I uploaded several lectures uh, that are related to receptors. All right. Wait a minute. see here estrogen like I've already said that it is wait a minute everybody I'm so sorry all right okay so here you look this is estrogen okay estrogen is a steroidal in nature when a molecule is a steroidal in nature so it does not need any assistance to pass through the cell membrane Okay, so you see here, it can directly enter into the cell and then it can bind to receptors which are within the cell already. These are cytoplasmic receptors. Now, these would go into the nucleus. It will bind on a particular site of DNA and then Transcription would happen. If you know what is transcription, transcription is actually a process by which proteins are being produced. All right. Sorry, guys. So basically, uh, what happens is RNA, messenger RNA is being produced during the transcription cycle. All right. Uh, during the, there are two processes in the protein manufacture. One is transcription, other one is translation. So in transcription, messenger RNA has been produced and then it uh, goes to the ribosomes and then different proteins are being made. Similarly, if you look here, when uh, estrogen binds to the receptor, as a result, second messengers are being produced which increases the CMP and as a result again different proteins would be produced which are useful. It is up to the CMP. It can actually go to the DNA and then proteins can be manufactured by that process as well. Wait everybody. Okay. Wait. Oh God. Now, getting back to the previous slide, estrogen binds to specific intracellular receptors. What do you mean by intracellular within the cell? Okay, so these are the receptors, if you look here, so these are the receptors that are within the cell. So the hormone receptor complex interacts with a specific DNA sequence. You see, it went here and then it binded to the specific DNA sequence. Why specific? Because it will only 
unwind and produce um, mRNA from a particular site where genes are to be, uh, you know, translated, all right? So not the entire DNA would be copied, only a particular side where, uh, from uh, uh, where instructions have, have to be carried on, that is only uh, uh, copied into the messenger RNA, all right? Okay, so the point is, wait a minute. Uh, we were here. Okay, and alter uh, DNA sequence and alters the transcription rates of target genes by recruiting co-activators and co-repressors. They may also affect the half-life of a specific messenger RNAs. These events lead to a change in the synthesis of a specific protein within a target cell. There are two types of estrogen receptors, ER alpha, ER beta, that differ in their tissue distribution. While both receptors have about the same affinity for 17 beta estradiol, they have different affinities for other ligands and affect target gene in a differential manner. All right. So you see, talking about metabolism. So 17 beta estradiol is extensively bound to sex steroid binding globulin and serum albumin. So sterone sulfate is frequently combined with alpha equivalent and other estrogenic sulfates is effective orally but natural estrogens are subjected to large first bypass, first pass effect. So synthetic estrogens may be administered orally, topically, transdermally, or by injection. All estrogens are extensively metabolized in the liver or are conjugated with either glucuronic acid or sulfate hydroxylated or O-methylated. Most metabolites are excreted in the urine with approximately 10% undergoing enterohepatic circulation and eventual elimination in the feces. So you see, what are the actions? So it helps in growth and development. Estrogens are required for the development and maturation of female internal and external genitalia, growth of breast, inner uh, liner, linear, sorry, linear bone growth at puberty and closure of epiphysis. Typical female distribution of subcutaneous fat and pubic and axillary hair is also influenced by estrogen. Estrogen are required in the uterus for growth of myometrium. What is myometrium? Myometrium is actually the middle layer of uterus where smooth muscles are present, all right? And that is actually the layer which contracts and then uterine contractions happen. Okay, and for growth and development of endometrial lining, continuous exposure can lead to endometrial hyperplasia and Bleeding. Wait. So what is endometrial hyperplasia? So you see, it is actually thickening of the wall. And due to the excessive thickening, and basically it causes pre-menopause. All right. And it, it is not a cancer, but it can produce cancer. All right. All right. Then is uh, menstrual cycle, of course, estrogens help in. Estrogens are required for ovarian follicular development and reg regulation of the menstrual cycle. Then it helps in systemic metabolism. Estrogens promote a positive nitrogen balance, increase plasma triglyceride, and tend to de decrease serum cholesterol by decreasing LDL and increase in HDL. Now, Estrogens decrease total serum proteins but increase level of transferred steroid, thyroid binding globulin. And then I'm sure 
these all terminologies you must have read in physiology when you discuss about coagulation right how exactly blood coagulates all right so overall estrogen increase the co the ability of the blood to coagulate estrogen dec decrease bone reabsorption with little effect on bone formation estrogen increase leptin release from adipose tissue influence libido and mood sorry Then we have therapeutic uses. So we do use synthetic estrogen to treat hypogonadism. Estrogens are used for our estrogen replacement therapy in ovarian failure or after castration. So castration is actually um, it it is removal of the testes in male. So it is given to the uh, men who have uh, the testes removed. Then we have menstrual abnormalities. So we do give synthetic one to treat that. We do give it to treat menopausal um, uh, as a menopausal therapy. So menopausal hormone therapy can be achieved with oral, parenteral, topical, or transdermal estrogen in various combination with or without progestin. We will study in our next lecture about it. Uh, then postmenopausal estrogen therapy improves hot flashes, sweating, and atrophic vaginitis. So this is actually uh, you see the the woman who just got um, menopause. Okay, they usually complain about these symptoms that they have hot flushes, they have sweating and you know other other symptoms so basically giving them a dose of estrogen will help them to tackle the symptoms what is atrophic vaginitis is it is actually this that the layer okay loses the cells okay so it's a dry and thin layer of cell and over here and uh, on this part of the side, you actually see the normal growth of the cell. Then we have other therapeutic uses. Post menopausal estrogen therapy slows the rate of bone loss. Estrogen are usually administered in a cyclical manner to avoid long periods of continuous exposure. Concomitant use of estrogen therapy with a progestin reduce the incidence of endometrial carcinoma transdermal delivery of 17 beta estradiol using a skin patch is effective and long lasting in treating menopausal symptoms oral contraception is definitely there and then uh wait a minute okay androgen dependent prostatic tumors are effectively treated by death i've already told you it is a synthetic estrogen all right so adverse effects and contraindication estrogens are associated with nausea headache cholestasis hypertension and gallbladder disease what is cholestasis it, it is actually this that the liver has reduced supply of uh, the bile, okay, or maybe because of the blockage of the duct, it is not reached on the target site, okay. All right. Then we have estrogen present, uh, an increased risk of endometrial cancer that is dose and duration dependent. Risk is reduced. By periodic withdrawal of estrogen therapy and replacement of progestin treatment and concomitant treatment with both drugs. Estrogen therapy is a major cause of postmenopausal bleeding and may mask bleeding due to 
endometrial cancer. Then we have estrogens are contraindicated in the presence of estrogen dependent or estrogen responsive carcinoma, liver disease, or thromboembolic disease. Recent large scale uh, clinical trials indicate that some regimens of MHT, again a synthetic estrogen, are associated with increased risk of myocardial infarction, stroke, breast cancer, and dementia. Now moving on to anti-estrogen. Why would we stop estrogen to be produced when it is so good? You see, sometimes men actually can have excessive amount of estrogen produced in their body, which would be uh, not good for them because of the mentioned reasons. So what does anti-estrogen do? They interfere with the binding of estrogen with its specific receptor, and they may also alter the conformation of the estrogen receptor that it fails to activate target gene. This class of compounds is distinguished from progestins and androgens, which also possess physiological antiestrogenic activity. Then we have clomiphene. Uh, full vesterant. So these are non and non steroidal agents. Uh, they bind competitively to the estrogen receptor and they also reduce the levels of some mitogens. Clomiphene has partial agonist activity in some tissues, including the ovary and endometrium. Full westerant appears to be an antagonist in all tissue. It has to be in all tissue. So these agents eventually reduce the number of functional receptors available for endogenous estrogens and diminish estrogen action both along the hypothalamic pituitary axis and in peripheral tissues. So uh, clomiphene is used to treat infertility in cases of an ovulation. An ovulation is absence of ovulation in women with an intact hypothalamic pituitary axis and sufficient production of estrogen. Full western is used to treat women with progressive breast cancer after uh, tamoxifen. So these agents may cause ovarian enlargement, hot flashes, nausea, and vomiting. Do not mention nausea, vomiting in the symptoms when I ask you. I want other symptoms, okay? All right. Then we have denazole. It's a test testosterone derivative with anti-androgen and anti-estrogenic uh, activities. Denazole inhibits several of the enzymes involved in steroidogenesis, but does not inhibit aromatase. May also bind to estrogen and androgen receptors and inhibit uh, gonadotropin release in both men and women. It is used to inhibit ovarian function, treat endometriosis. What is endometriosis? Endometriosis is this that. You see, excessive cells develop, okay, which are actually uh, similar to the lining, but they de develop over it, okay? So it's over the uterus, it's on the fallopian tube, on the ovary, this is endometriosis, okay? So endometriosis and fibrocystic disease of breast, so this is this, that around the mammary glands, a lot of cysts produce. This agent may cause edema and masculination, masculinization, that is deepening of voice and decreased breast size in some women, headache and hepatocellular disease. Hepatocellular disease is actually uh, cancer in cells, uh, in the liver cells, okay? All right. 
Then we have it is contraindicated in pregnant women or in patients with hepatic disease. Right, everybody? Okay, that is it, everybody. Thank you so much.